Okay, cool. So the stream got cut off. I don't know why. It said something with community violations or someone reported inappropriate content. I assume it's because there was a picture of my T6 as the thumbnail and it automatically assumed it was about firearms. It's not nothing. It has nothing to do with firearms. <laughs> this is a airsoft gun or gel blaster if you're in Australia. Uh, so anyway, we are uh, maintenancing the DSG. I've stripped it down to the gearbox and we're looking at the different parts and I'm, I was sort of meant to explain what was going on. Uh, and I was talking about PME. So I've adjusted this piston to reduce PME. The way I've done this and the way you should probably try to reduce PME is by lightening the piston as much as possible. Uh, I did this by uh, cutting lightning holes in it, as you can see, as well as stripping any unnecessary teeth from the piston itself. Let me get some focus on that. So obviously with a DSG, well, I guess not obviously, but um, for you guys' knowledge, where did I put the sector gear? There we go. Uh, so for you guys who don't know, a DSG is just a, essentially just a normal AEG that has two sectors, dual sectors on their sector gear compared to one sector on a single sector gear, so a normal uh, gear, which means that effectively there's twice the rotations on the same surface area, which is a very sort of broad way of, of it's a very newbie way of saying it. <laughs> but I strip all of the unnecessary teeth because when this is caught by this piston, obviously I don't have as many teeth to function with. So as this sort of catches on here, as you can see, that's how many teeth I'm gonna be engaging with. So all of these teeth are unnecessary. So I grinded them down, removed the material to make the whole thing lighter. And then I adjusted for AOE by adding two metal washers to the tip here. I think these are just normal metal washers. I don't think these are the washers that came with the Model Max head. Um, and then I removed the first teeth or first tooth from the piston rack to um, adjust for AOE. And this has been working fine. I know a lot of people have been having trouble with the Model Max head uh, for the screw loosening or getting crooked or bent. Uh, I'm not seeing that. This looks fine. And this is like 10, 15,000 shots in. So this is, uh, this is good. So we're going to be cleaning that, relubing that putting it back in the system. Um, so I actually brought along a new SHS piston uh, to switch out with this thing in case I need to, to sort of do that. Uh, I guess I don't, so that's nice. Uh, right, so now it just comes cleaning uh, and maintenance of the box itself, uh, which is pretty simple. And if you guys have never opened up your, your Airsoft uh, M4s before, uh, I strongly advise you to do it once in a while. Just open her up, get some grease in there, uh, dry off the gears. There's a lot of like black gunk that collects inside of your receivers. Uh, and just to give you like an example, I'm just going to wipe a finger across my spur gear. And um, yeah, she's uh, she's naughtied up a bit now. So obviously, we want to make sure that all this like grime and grossness doesn't get inside of our gearbox and mess up our performance in any way. Um, also, I uh, just want to make a, a brief shout out here. So a lot of people have been avoiding model max triggers because they aren't as adjustable as uh, speed HPA triggers. And with the new generation of model max advanced triggers, and I think they call these like the advanced edition, they've essentially added another um, another hex screw to make sure that you can adjust in two directions. So on the old Model Max triggers, if I could just bring it up to the camera so you can see, there we go. On the old Model Max triggers, uh, you only had, let me see if I can get this in frame. I am so bad at this. Okay, so on the old Model Max triggers, you only really had that screw right there. This screw right here allows you to adjust how far back the trigger is on its resting position, uh, which essentially is just how far back do I, or how much pull do I have to give in order for this thing to pull the trigger, which is fine. That's shortening your trigger pull and I get that. But one of the cool things about the HPA triggers was that they had a small set screw on this travel as I'd like to call it. So let's say I was pulling this trigger. Actually, let's put it back in the gearbox so you guys can see that, right? So let's say I want to pull this trigger. Let's get the spring out of the way. I want to pull this trigger. 
So it would be reset. Oh, why can't I hit it? There you go. Ah, there we go. So it would be reset at this position. Well, let's say I want to pull it. Well, if I didn't have anything to stop my over travel, right? So this is reset. This is pull. Now I have all of the space back here that I don't really need because I pulled the trigger. So I wanted to flatten out a lot sooner so I get like a tactile feeling of when I'm triggering out. So adding the secondary set screw, which is what they did in the advanced series, has actually really helped with the trigger pull. So I would recommend these over the HPA speed triggers now, mostly for the fact of customization. Like you can say what you want about Model Max. Uh, a lot of their like external bits, like the trigger, look really good. And I like the fact that you can actually pick between a, a bent or a broken or a straight pull or a blade or whatever you want. So I'd recommend them now. Get the advanced though. Uh, the other one doesn't have as many features as the HPA speed. So let's get to cleaning this thing. But I, in order to do that, I do need to get some, some paper towel. I know you're supposed to clean it with like a microfiber cloth, uh, but I CBH to do that. Uh, so just uh, one moment here. Hmm? Uh, right. So got some towels. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to be wiping off. So if you guys are watching this in order to maintenance your own guns, uh, what you can do is you can pull out your gears and give them a little, a little wipe down, get some of the gunk off, um, just so you don't get like unnecessary frictions uh, inside of the um, inside the gearbox because there is like grime or dirt in there. Uh, you can do that to all of your little uh, gears. Make sure to. I know how many shims are on these, so I'm not too worried about losing them, uh, and I know how to shim my gun, um, so obviously I'm not too bothered about losing any shims but um if you don't know how to shim your gun or is this your first time opening up um an m4 or any airsoft gun really um there are these tiny metal shims on the tip of your gear let me just uh, actually just highlight that so these will essentially decide the distance between uh the gearbox and the bottoming out of uh of the actual gear uh, shaft. So these have a tendency to fall off pretty easily. And you want to make sure that if they fall off a gear, they're put back on a gear again. <laughs> really important, else your gun is going to run so much worse. Uh, and whatever you do maintenance wise is not going to help the fact that you ha now have uh, an unshimmed build. So, you know, warning. Uh, and then take your piston, wipe off your piston head. There's a lot of gunk that gets caught on that thing as well. And, uh, you know, gunk is usually good when it comes to air seal, but the grime that's in these uh, is what can cause a lot of friction, which is bad. I think any mechanical engineer will tell you that unnecessary friction in a mechanical system is a bad thing. So I just like to wipe stuff off. Uh, get like the tracks where the uh, piston rides, like these side cracks, get those wiped off as well, can collect a lot of grime. And uh, inside of the cylinder can collect a lot of grime. So let's just uh, like poof up our uh, paper towel, shove it in there, really get her, get her in, get in there, and then like pull her out again. And look at this. Ugh, I got a grossness. All uh, right, and then get the cylinder head that can often collect stuff at the tip here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, camera doesn't even want to focus on it. Look at that. It's not necessarily detrimental to your performance, but buildup can be. There, You know, you can never be too safe with this sort of thing. So just grab your trusty cleaning utensil. Uh, sometimes I use a Q-tip for this, where you can just sort of wiggle... Uh, paper towel in there, sort of press it in like that. And then you just pull, pull and wipe. There we go. That that already helped out a lot. So I'm just going to do that again. Uh, sort of like this. Yeah. Oop. And then wipe again. 
There we go. Okay, that's much better. All right, uh, there we go. And that's pretty much it for, for maintenance. So now we just gotta put her back together. Um, I have a Gate Titan in here. Um, I think I bought it as a basic edition and then upgraded to the advanced edition because I didn't need all the cables and the uh, USB mod. Um, but for MOSFETs like the Titan that uses optical sensors to measure um, key response, make sure that there's no um, goop or dirt on the sensor array. Uh, because that will mess up your readings. I don't think there is on this thing, so we should be good. Um, so let's just uh, remount stuff. Uh, put that. In. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is a little bit weird with this. So I'm actually going to do the cylinder last, uh, and then get some grease for the gears. I think I have that over in my cabinet. Um, in terms of like what you use for lubrication for gears, obviously you can get gear grease, um, but I'm always under the conviction that any lubrication is better than no lubrication. There is a, uh, a cautionary tale to be had here that if you're dealing with something that has rubber seals like your cylinder, you don't want to use petroleum-based lubricants like Vaseline. Uh, because it will eat away at the um, at the rubber seal, and eventually it will destroy uh, your O-rings. And uh, to an extension of that, obviously, your air seal. So you want to stay away from doing that. Uh, you want to stick with water-based lubrications. Uh, I This is like my go-to uh, lube. This is from Ultimate, which is like uh, ASG uh, makes this. It's a perfectly suitable lubricants. Uh, I think it's water-based. Uh, they make it in two thicknesses. So one is for gears and one is for cylinders. Real talk, I use the same one for both. It just, it functions, sure, efficiency-wise, it's not the best thing to do. But again, no lubrication is worse than any, or any lubrication is still better than no lubrication at all. Just remember the, the free tech tip I just gave you. Um, so when I'm lubing, especially because I'm using Titan, uh, you don't want to overdo it because once these gears start whipping around, you can actually whip some grease onto the cycle detection sensor of the Titan. So you want to make sure you don't overdo it. So you just take your uh, your spur, for example, and you just sort of gently coax around. Now, specifically with the spur gear, I like to do a little dab on the rear uh, just so if there is any microscopic contact between the bottom of the spur gear and the bottom of your gearbox, there really shouldn't be. If there is, you haven't shimmed it properly. But if there is, that does help out a bit. And then I like to just sort of just do a little round on the spur gear, make sure that's, you know, I, I think like 60% of the teeth have a little coated layer in between them. And I think the, the moral of the story when it comes to greasing is just don't overdo it. Um, if you're running a purely mechanical system and it's just like trigger contact, sure, go nuts, especially if you're not using that thick of a grease. Uh, you can't really like over be oversell us about it. But I've, oh, I, I, the amount of times where I've like greased up uh, a customer gun and thought like, great, let's do a test fire. And then I do a test fire and uh, the Titan says that the uh, sensor is obstructed and I have to tear the whole thing apart again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's the worst. Um, so don't be oversellers with it. Uh, but yeah, I like to just give a little dab on each of the gears. And, and just remember that like these gears spin. So an extra application on any of the axes is going to spread out on the other gears. So that's why it's kind of critical to not be super oversellers with this. Um, but obviously you don't want it to run dry. So get the contact surfaces, make sure that your gears are not running dry. Um, for those who don't know, the cycle detection sensors are located on the top part of the Titan, this thing, and they're located right at the tip here, right there. So obviously the top of the sector gear is something you want to keep clear of any sort of like goo obstructions. And yes, that feeling is the worst. It's like you feel like a cool tech who just 
cleaned and maintenance guns and yeah yeah this guy this gun's gonna clap i've got my 16 tpa motor in there I've got 13 to 1 meme gearing on it i've short stroked it i've got my pre-cocking enabled let's run it and it runs like two shots and then some gunk gets sprayed from the sector gear onto the sensor and the titan will just stop responding it'll give you the error code you open it up see like oh no what's wrong uh, is it broken? Is it, did a piston crack? Did a wire connection get broke? You go to diagnostics, and the only thing it says is sensor obstructed. And you have to tear the whole thing apart to do this. Put it back together. Now it works. Literally the worst. <laughs> All right, so I gunked up the O-ring for the uh, air seal again. Give it a little test. This is one... I'd say, I'd say this is the first test you can do to test your air seal. It's in no way definitive. There are a lot of tests you can do to, to test your air seal. But one thing I like to do before I put everything together, put a little fingy on the top of your cylinder here, and then obviously just push your piston in. Can you push it? I mean, I can't. I can push it this far. And you see, I, let me just get that. All right. That's as far as I can push it. And, you know, so that's... Test one for air seal. If you can do that, you're on the right track. Next step, take your nozzle, in this case with the KWA, that's nozzle and tappet plate, put it on, and then put your finger over the nozzle and do the same thing. And see, this is, this is going a little easier. You definitely want resistance on this. You want to make sure that there's resistance, which there is in mine, but the KWA freaking nozzle just isn't that good when it comes to air seal, which is so annoying because I can't switch it. I can't take a different nozzle that has a better seal, like, I don't know, a model max adjustable nozzle and make the perfect air seal. I can't do it because I need the tappet plate for the KWA as well. So please, if you're doing a 2021 edition of the KWA, please just give me a normal tappet plate and nozzle. That's all I'm asking. These guns are so good. But I, I am hesitant to like recommend them wholeheartedly because of this thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, Matt Bridge says rotate the tappet plate 90 degrees. Uh, good luck with that. This is, uh, again, nozzle is built in, so a fat chance, sadly. Uh, unless you meant something else and I'm just being a massive moron. Also a possibility. Uh, um but anyway, so uh, we got that setup done. So let's uh, install our trigger. Uh, one difference between the HPA Speed and the Model Max I didn't mention before, Model Max still comes with the standard L spring uh, for trigger reset. I think it's fine. It, it does the job, especially if you make it super short. It doesn't have a lot of resistance, so it feels all right. <laughs> it feels all right. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, but I would still really like it to have the same sort of like spring that the... Um, Lift it slightly off to do air seal testing. Yeah, true. Um, and then, so what he meant was you take this and you sort of like lift it off the tip like this. So you have a little gap between the bottoming out just to see like how good your air seal is from there. Ish, right? Or you can lift it slightly this way to ensure that like you have a nice seal at the bottom of your uh, nozzle. All that kind of stuff. What beer are you drinking while doing tech work? Uh, well, I am poor man student game, so I will drink whatever I have uh, or whatever is on sale. Usually that's like some cheap uh, Budweiser or some light Pilsner. But if I'm feeling frisky, I uh, reach for my whiskey shelf and I grab myself a bourbon. This is my uh, bourbon of the month is my Buffalo Trace. Love this thing. Really sweet corn-filled, uh, delicious thing. Can only recommend it. Uh, right. So let's just install this trigger real quick. Um, yeah. And also, uh, this is kind of... I think anybody who's ever taken a gearbox apart, you know that this is probably one of the worst things to do when you're assembling, is getting this finicky little L-spring up and in and uh, it's appropriate and then dropping it in appropriately as well. It's the worst. Uh, and uh, I don't have a Linus tech tip on how to do it easier. Uh, I'm sorry. This is just finicky. And that's just how that's going to be. <laughs> um, I think I missed it on the left side. So we may have 20 minutes of, uh, of just me 
finicking with a trigger. Um, again, I don't know why I live stream this. This is like all of my credibility can go out the window in so many critical parts of this. Like, could you imagine when I pull this entire thing together and it's like, hey, hey, the guys, that's how you maintenance your M4s. Uh, and then, you know, I pull the trigger and it just doesn't work. I'm scared. Like, uh, it's like 2020 has done a lot of things for a lot of people's anxiety, but Jesus, right? Like, um, you're, I'm making it worse for myself than it actually has to be. So I managed to get the trigger in there. Uh, through the art of distraction, I completely managed to make you forget about me fiddling that because I was talking about anxiety. So now we can actually start assembling the rest of the gearbox. So again, KWA makes it a bit finicky because you have to line up the other spring guide and then you have to push the entire assembly on, which is... It's just the worst. <laughs> like, I hate it so much. Um, so you push that in, and then you sort of tilt up the cylinder head. See, this is... Uh, I hate it. <laughs> I think that's the only thing I can say about this, is that I hate it. There we go. And then... And then you just sort of push in... And everything should align nicely. Uh, this is exclusively a process that you need to do on KWA guns. I despise it. It's it's so bad. <laughs> Especially because the, the spring is obviously longer than the spring guides because it needs to compress properly. Um, there we go. And then you sort of just try to finagle everything in. It's It's... Such a hassle. I despise it like the plague. <laughs> if any KWA representatives ever see this, um, if there is an easier way to do this, let me know. But I haven't found one. Uh, all right. Uh, free line is tech tip in the, in the chat there. If you're having trouble installing the trigger, you can grab... Uh, small magnets and hold the um, the trigger in place. Uh, the other thing he's talking about is the anti reversal latch. That is also like notoriously something that will be finicky and jump out, especially if you, have, if you haven't shimmed the height of your bevel gear correctly. Uh, it can get really messy on trying to get your anti reversal latch to sort of behave uh, while you're doing that. So let's just uh, just want to edit the setup a little bit so we just zoom slightly more. There we go. Then we just move that into position. There we go. Okay, so we're almost at the finish line. Speaking of anti-reversal latch, uh, it's uh, I, I would say it's time for that installation, but I honestly forgot. Uh, so, yep. I think that's probably my biggest monkey moment as a tech is I uh, didn't install the anti-reversal latch uh, on a system I was putting together. And then... It had a quick change spring system, so obviously I didn't like notice at all. And then I put the entire thing together. And once I had put the entire thing together and shot the first shot, you could just hear the motor re like revving the other way, um, and saying like, "Nope, nope, I'm uh, I'm able to move the other way, so I'm going to." Um, so as much as we talk about like proprietary things being bad or like design like reinventing the reinventing the wheel being bad in airsoft kwa has made a major blunder with this thing but they made something genius with this thing so the anti-reversal latch is actually positioned in a thick groove on the right side of the bevel gear which doesn't really mean anything for the performance of the gun, and you can still use a standard anti-reversal latch, but it means that it can stay completely in place under any kind of pressure. So I can I can literally grab my, my trusty dentist tool, pull it back, and just insert my sector or my my bevel gear. No sweat. Ah. There we go, remove the tool. And there she is. And she just sticks in place. Like I, 
nothing nothing happens now you can work on your wiring and make sure you're not pinching any wires and everything like that you can check is my is my piston lined up yes it is good it, do do i have i put a lid on my titan yes did you just touch the optical sensor with your greasy fingers yes you did make sure to wipe that off <laughs> and then you just line up the pins of the titan and boom she's uh back together so uh yeah, I think uh, I think she we're ready to put a lid on her. Um, yep. So let's just uh, put a lid on. Her. Now, uh, putting the lid on a gearbox can actually be pretty tricky because sometimes your three uh, the three sort of uh, gear shafts uh, won't line up, which makes everything incredibly tricky. So one of the tricks I like to use is I like to sort of like tilt it in. So you sort of press the top down and then you sort of pull downwards and tilt everything on. And then obviously using, um, well, I use my flat headed dentist tool, this thing to sort of come in from the sides of the gearbox in here and like in here and sort of push gears into the their respective um, holes. Now, because I'm obviously a wizard uh, I mean, obviously, I have a YouTube channel, so I can never be wrong about anything. Uh, that's how it works. Uh, mine just clicked perfectly in place because uh, obviously this gun is completely 100% perfect. So uh, yeah, there's no trouble for me. Um, now, the worst or most tedious part about pulling apart a gearbox, especially if you do it on, uh, on trying to do it as fast as possible, as I often do, uh, in the shop to save customers money because obviously you know we're hourly um, is uh, trying to screw everything back in. So I've developed a a secret technique uh, on how to do it quickly. Uh, free tech tip once again. Uh, you just put your stuff in and then you spin what, another screw while you're doing this thing. So does this speed up the process? Yeah, by like a whopping couple of seconds. So uh, if you're a customer who's had to pay an hourly fee, this one goes out to you. I think about you. You're in my mind. Um, and I do the same thing when I'm unscrewing. Uh, I unscrew about two thirds of the way and then move my screwdriver to the next screw and then unscrew with my finger um, because I'm just that service minded. Um, I know you might think to yourself, how can a man be this humble? But it's just how I am. It's just how it was built. Okay. Uh, so we got the thing moved back together. One test I like to do before like, I start putting it in the receiver is make sure everything that can move should move or everything that should move can move. So the trigger test, can this move freely? Yes, sir, it can. Uh, the nozzle, can this move freely? Freely, obviously it's under tension. Yes, it can. Uh, and also, if you're having problems fitting your lid on here, like you feel like there's something rubbing against, maybe the sector gear doesn't quite want to align. Nine times out of 10, it's because your tappet plate fin is positioned weird on top of the sector gear. So if you're having trouble doing it, like getting it back on, just do like this with your nozzle, click it down. That'll solve it. Uh, another free tech tip. We are rolling that today. Uh, so now I think... I think we need to fix that motor. Um, so what happened was to the HSH motors for those guys who were just joining us. Um, I was taking this apart after 10,000 shots, never having like maintenance did after that. I guess it was sort of a torture test. Uh, that's what I call it when I'm being lazy. Um, and as I removed the motor, the motor gear just fell off. Uh, there's no damage to it. There's no like obvious indication of wear and tear on this gear. There's no cracked teeth or anything like that. It's fine. The only thing that happened to this D type head is that the Allen key or the Allen screw, the set screw that holds it in place had just wandered out. So interesting. <laughs> So that, a bit bizarre, uh, but what are you going to do? So now, obviously, I'm just going to mount it back on the motor itself. It's a D-type, so it just sticks on like that. Uh, and then I just got to 
screw it down again. Uh, I had a conversation about using Loctite on this. I think I'm going to advise myself against it. That's probably going to bite my ass, but I don't want Loctite getting anywhere near the internals uh, of the rest of the build. Um, I hope the tech gods understand and will show mercy upon me um, for this indiscretion. Uh, but yeah, we had the problem earlier where I didn't quite know what Allen key actually fit in here. And my set increments by the half. So it goes one, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, instead of one, two, three, four, very annoying, but it's an electronics kit and it's using electronic standards. Um, so I'm going to try to experiment with some smaller, uh, torque bits and see if I can't get something that matches in between. I think this might do it. Yeah, this might do it. Uh, so as I'm doing this, uh, I, I guess I could give a few updates on what's happening with the channel. We hit 925 subscribers. It's pretty huge. Uh, and like I mentioned in my Cursed Airsoft Guns video, which is my most recent video, uh, we're doing a giveaway when we hit a thousand and I guess for you guys tuning in, I can sort of, uh, I can sort of, uh, reveal what the giveaway is going to be. It's going to be a model max hop up unit. Um, it's more specifically, it's going to be the limited Christmas edition. Um, yeah. So that's a giveaway that's going to be sponsored by the store I work at. Uh, and it's, it's going to be exclusive to my subscribers. It's not going to be given away anywhere else, not on Facebook, nothing like that. This is a pure, Airsoft Gus appreciation um, thing that they're doing uh, because they really like my content and they want to support it. And obviously I, uh, I like my content as well and I like the people who watch it. So I want to give you guys something and that something is da, 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 a Model Max uh, hop-up unit. So when we hit a thousand subs, uh, we're probably going to do a giveaway contest or something like that. I don't think it's going to be anything wild because I want everybody to be able to participate regardless of uh, if they have like a camera equipment or anything like that. So I'm not going to ask people to make videos or anything like that. I think it's just going to be like comment on the video, uh, Airsoft Gus thousand giveaway, whatever. And then once you've done that, um, I'm going to give away the hop-up unit. Um, it's going to be a sports line top up unit. So that's uh, interesting. I am just fiddling the shit out of this motor uh, gear. Uh, so let's just uh, see if we can't get her to fit on like that. And then, uh, yeah. Else I might have to go and see if I can find a very small Allen screw <laughs> or a, a very small set screw to replace it. Um, I'm trying out everything in my arsenal. It's just not working. <laughs> Is this working? I think this might be it. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. All right, let's tighten. What's up, my Nathan uh, and Mark Airsoft? Thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, so what we're doing is DSG maintenance. We're actually just finishing up, and I am very embarrassed that it took me 33 minutes, uh, but that's just the timer on this one because the other uh, live stream I did was actually flagged for inappropriate content. Uh, I assume it's because I said uh, the C pandemic word uh, or there was the picture of uh, my KWA in like the thumbnail. Um, very uncool, non-poggers moment. Uh, but that's just how it is. That's how it goes, as the warrior poet Sarah Larson once said. Um, so let's uh, let's mount her back in. Uh, I'm pretty confident everything I do is correct, and uh, I'm a master of the technical arts. So I'm not even going to do the classic test where you just mount the um, the uh, pistol grip and the motor to see if it works, uh, because you know uh, I'm a humble god. Uh, so. Uh, we're just going to mount it directly back in the shell. Uh, obviously, I am not that great. I just really am done with this now. <laughs> so now I just kind of want to get a sandwich and eat a bit. So, um, yeah. Uh, KWA plug is also very bizarre, but, you know, 
we're we're playing it by ear. Uh, so just uh, screw that in. Da, 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 da. Line it up. It's lined up, gentlemen. Uh, push in the rear. Now, okay, I think this might be one of the last line of tech tips. Um, but uh, when you're putting back together your receiver, you're obviously going to have your rear pin. You're going to have your center lock pin. You're going to have your uh, pistol grip. And you're going to have your um, stock screw butt stock screw that sort of holds everything together a lot of people are asking which like order to do them in i think there isn't a correct order but there is a way that'll make it a lot harder for you so the way i do it is that i like to sit in the rear screw or the rear pin because that just holds the gearbox in place and then i do the center pin and the reason for that is that once you've done your um once you've done your pistol grip and your buttstock, you're sort of positioned your gearbox into the receiver uh, where it'll actually stay. So you'll, you might have trouble fitting this in if your gearbox alignment isn't... Um, this can happen a lot on, on cheaper guns and on older guns. Uh, hashtag classic army syndrome. So I like to do it like this. Uh, sadly, in the world of a professional tech, 90% of the guns you work on are old guns or classic army guns. It's just how it is. Um, it's, it's, it's not a great lot to have in life, but it's actually kind of cursed. Uh, you, like you, perf you, you, you deepen yourself into the art of teching and that's what happens to you. You get to work on, uh, six year old guns and, uh, switch springs in classic armies, um, with no quick change spring system. Uh, shout out to Tex in the chat. Anyway, I've made one of the classic blunders, uh, but luckily I've spotted it before I've gotten too deep. Uh, and this is, will happen a million times to you, no matter how good you are at anything. Uh, this will ha this happens in the Umbrella Armory shop as well. It just is the curse. Um, and that is that I forgot to reinsert the mock bolt release. <laughs> uh, I think mock bolt release gets me at least once every 10 times, um, at least. And then the other one that gets me is, um, oh, what is the other one? Mock bolt release. And then uh, sometimes if it's like this, uh, but a more in-depth system, if it's like a, a gearbox mounted uh, charging handle system, I will also forget to put that in. I guess it's one of the dangers of working on so many different guns is that you end up getting pretty susceptible to forgetting how the actual procedure of putting things together is for different guns. Uh, luckily, pretty quick fix. Just sort of slide the gearbox out, slide this in like it's supposed to sit. I think it's supposed to sit like this, right? Yep. I think that's good. And you just sort of slide the gearbox back on top. There we go. Uh, like it never happened. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, and then, yeah, rear pin in, center pin in. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. And then, uh, yeah, back or back of the rear pin. Right. So uh, this is the uh, probably the most dull part of the process. Uh, where I'm just putting everything back together. Uh, the nervous anticipation of seeing if you actually messed your gun up. Uh, hashtag young techs. I've, you, trust me, I've been there. Uh, <laughs> where you're just sort of nervously waiting to see whether or not you messed it up. Uh, like it worked. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, so we got a question in the chat. Uh, from Nathan. I watched your review on the GT G and G GTP9, but it broke the other day. How can I get more parts for it? So that's the, um, I mentioned it, yeah, in the video that it, obviously GNG has used a lot of proprietary parts. Um, but if I'm not entirely, yeah, actually, um, apparently, and this wasn't a, f uh, I, I know that it wasn't a reality when I was doing the video, but apparently there is a shop in Europe that has stocked itself up on um, spare parts for the GTP, uh, GTP9. 
Um, and I know a dude in the comment section actually mentioned it um, in the video, like recently, like last week, I think he posted it. So uh, I don't remember the name of the shop, but if you do go into the comments of the uh, video, I think a guy actually linked uh, to the shop where you could find some spare parts that you need. Uh, so that's my best advice for that. I mentioned in the video that you might be uh, shit out of luck if that happens to you because G&G is a Taiwanese manufacturer. Uh, oh shit, I'm in the US. Uh, well, I think evike.com might be your best friend here. Or alternatively, do what I usually do when I'm looking for this. I did this when I was actually uh, researching for the review of the T6, is that I wrote to KWA on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, I got a hold of uh, KWA representatives on Instagram, and they directed me to a email address that I could email uh, to actually get stuff uh, shipped to me. Uh, so, I, I mean, yeah, I'd say look on Evike. If you can't find it on Evike, uh, hit up the manufacturer on Facebook or something. They have marketing representatives that are pretty active on the uh, on the chat line. I know that counts for G&G as well. Uh, I know it's a pretty cop out question to tell you to go do it yourself, but that's about the best advice I can give. I'm sorry, my friend. Um, all right, screwing in the old uh, mag release. There we go. Ba -da -da -da. And now finally for the motor grip. I don't know why I, I, I've recently, when I've taken apart uh, my guns, I actually do the motor grip last, and I'm not sure why. Um, I guess I'm just sort of weird like that. Uh, now I did a big blunder uh, and I actually took out the screws or I put, uh, when I was storing this after I dismounted it, I put it like this, like this, like, th like this. <laughs> so the screws fell out, which is, uh, yeah. So another, whoa, we're getting another lightness tech tip. Um, it's just uh, when you're, when you're storing this after you placed it out, if you don't want to, do what I'm doing right now, which is like fiddling on getting the screw in. Let's actually just zoom out so you guys can see what the hell's going on. Uh, fiddling getting the screw in. Just freaking store it like this, you dingus. You know, that, that works fine. Um, let's see if we can just get this mounted up. This is the fiddly uh, part of the external process, and uh, I'm not a fan of it, honestly, but... You got to be really careful with the motor connectors of the Titan as well. They're pretty fragile compared to like other connectors, but again, it's just thin copper sheets. So I mean, it makes sense. Um, so I just like to put it on like that a little bit. So it's not all the way in. Um, and luckily this gearbox because of the uh, charging handle can rest on its side or on its face, I guess. And then you just always magnetic screwdrivers. Oh, Guys, the camera disconnected. One sec. Mm -mm -mm. Just go with the... Uh... And... Let's see. Oh. Oh, no, the battery's low. Oh, dang it. Well, I mean, uh, you know what? Pretty natural ending to it. I was just going to sit here and, and babble anyway as I was screwing in the last three screws. Um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to hit me up in the comment section of the live chat. Uh, or if you're watching this on YouTube later, hello. I'm sorry we started in the middle, but some, uh, I guess my uh, content was flagged as inappropriate. I have no idea why. I wasn't playing any music and I wasn't uh, cussing an abnormal amount. Um, and I posted it as not made for kids. So that's kind of bizarre, but Hey, YouTube algorithm do what YouTube algorithm does. Um, but essentially this was just a very quick guide on some, some maintenance that I was doing on my own gun, uh, that I would recommend forward to you as users. If you have any other questions about what you can do to make your guns run better for longer, feel free to hit them up in the chat. I think we're gonna make a video soon that actually details that exact topic. If you tuned in, thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate it. I thought it was just gonna be me staring into the void uh, as I uh, talk to myself as I so often do. Thank you so much for checking it out. And uh, till next got time, which I think will be a video well, if we're, if we're lucky, it's going to be the giveaway video for a thousand sub, sub celebration. 
And if not, I do believe the next video is going to be a video about my Milsim kit. So if you are a Milsim bro, uh, stick around for that. I did just get a new carrier rig and I'm waiting for one more part to come in. And then I'd, I'd say that's set up for the summer of 2021, which hopefully will be filled with plenty of airsoft. We'll be ready. Uh, and I'm going to go through it and show you how I did it. Uh, but until then, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, as uh, the good Mr. Noble says, See ya.